Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaw here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about assistance exercises and why we have to be careful about using them as accessory exercises. And I want to state up front when I say that, that I'm not saying that we should never use assistance exercises as accessories. What I'm saying is that their value as an assistance exercise is removed when we do that. And what do I, what do I mean by that? Uh, if we're taking an, an assistance movement and we're doing more than five reps with it, we're turning it into an accessory. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, because people will say, well, you know, I, I did this assistance exercise and uh, for high reps and my, my maxes went up. Okay, but do you know why? Did they go up because you did an assistance movement or did they go up because you gained muscle? Well, the obvious answer is because you gained muscle because there, there is very little, if any, movement pattern carryover. Uh, you know, for example, I tell people this all the time. You'll see a lot of coaches who will try to explain this. There is very little technical overlap between a high rep squat and a max squat. In other words, your technique doesn't carry over. None of the technique that you practice, uh, the bar pass, things like that, they really don't matter on a max if you're using a lightweight. And, you know, lightweight could be 70%, 60% of your max, whatever that is, because it's a completely different movement at that point, right? The technique is different, the strains are different, the stresses is different, the muscle fiber recruitment, the, mu the muscle ratio recruitment is different. In other words, on a, on a heavy bench press versus a, a higher rep bench press, the ratio of quad, delt, and tricep is not the same. In a, in a given person. If you hook up an EMG and read it on those different muscles and not tell someone that it's the same exercise, but being done for a heavy single or a heavy double versus eight or 10 reps, they would believe it's a different exercise because the muscles are not worked at the same ratios. Um, the same with squatting and so on and so forth. So when you understand it from that perspective, you realize that you're not getting movement pattern carryover when you do that. You're just getting bigger. Now, hypertrophy is the single biggest factor in what our, our max strength potential is. So if you got bigger from doing that, of course your max goes up. But it's not because of training the movement patterns. Because max movement patterns are not the same as rep work. Okay, They are not the same as lighter weight. They, a, a movement has to be pretty heavy to have carryover. And in fact, uh, an assistance movement done for a max, such as a good morning I just did there, say a box squat, a floor press, whatever, has better carryover to the classic lift, the competition lift for a max than the, the 10 rep sets do with the competition lift. They just do in terms of training it. So step back and think about that for a moment and then think about uh, assistance exercises. And I'll give you a bunch of examples. Everything done in this video. Uh, good morning. How about a closed grip bench press if you're if you're a wider grip bencher? A closed grip bench press, a floor press, a deficit deadlift, a pause deadlift, right? A block pull. Uh, squatting. How about box squats? How about pause squats? Pen squats. These are all assistance movements. Why are they assistance movements? They're very similar movement pattern with movement pattern carry over to the lift that we are trying to improve. Okay, the movement is close enough that there's carry over in the movement pattern itself, but an assistance exercise addresses a weak link. Okay, uh, example, uh, deficit deadlift you see me doing here. Higher rate of force production, you have to you have the move, maintain the force, the peak force longer. Therefore, it improves your lockout. Okay, everyone get that? How about a block pull, a two-inch block pull? Increases your speed off the floor. Why? Because usually a speed off the floor tends to be slow. You're slow the first three or four inches. Okay, two-inch block pull, you're pulling from a position that is just below where you're slowest at. Let's say you're slowest at three to four inches, which means very slow off the floor. Okay, you're having to generate force from that position. Uh, again, somewhat slow off the chest, slow just off the chest, you know, a board press. Okay. These are assistance exercises. 
And that throws a bunch of people off. I, yes, I literally said that about a board press and a, a deficit deadlift and so on as far as where their respective carryover is. Uh, that will cause some disagreement from some people who don't understand strength curves, and that's okay. It's okay. You don't have to understand what I said. It's fine. A lot of champions and world record holders and coaches of them will agree with what I just said. So, assistance movements, they have carryover. All right, for that carryover to have benefit, for it to be an assistance movement, it has to be heavy enough to be heavy. In other words, if you're not straining at all on the first rep, it's not an assistance. I don't care if it was an early assistance press of some type, you know, your, your floor press or whatever. Okay. It is a great assistance movement. But if it's not heavy on the first reps, meaning it's anything more than, a, than about a five rep set. You know, so assistance work, we're usually in the one to five rep range. Okay. If it's any lighter than that, what's happening? Well, we're just getting hypertrophy from it. We won't get the mo same movement pattern benefits. Doesn't mean we don't get any benefits. Well, no. I mean, will a deficit deadlift for sets of 10 put muscle on you? You bet they will. Okay. My God, you'll get big from that. If they're challenging sets of 10, yes, that's a, a valid hypertrophy exercise. It's taking a deadlift and adding range of motion in the length and position for a lot of the muscles. You're going you're gonna to get bigger from that. That's, a, that's actually a decent hypertrophy exercise. Well, if you get bigger in all those muscles, so those are the muscles you use in the deadlift, of course your deadlift will improve. But it won't improve the movement pattern. Because it wasn't heavy enough. Understand the difference here. So hopefully this is, this is being made clear to people. It has to be heavy enough for you to strain on the first rep. It's got to feel fairly heavy. If the first rep is easy and you're not hitting upper threshold motor units, immediately on the first rep, it's not being used in a, as an assistance. The assistance has to have movement carryover to a one rep max. In other words, it probably needs to be 80% or higher of a max for that assistance lift. In other words, one to five reps. It needs to be. If not, you're just using it to get bigger. The movement pattern itself isn't carrying over. Not significantly. Right? And we need all of those. It, honestly, it, your, your best case scenario is to do max work. To have some assistance work for your weak link. You know, you don't need more than one assistance for any exercise ever. At any given time. And then we should be doing, uh, you know, hypertrophy work to get bigger, to raise our strength potential. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.